I feel like the Lord is here today in a special way. Amen. You're not here by accident. You are here because the Lord has brought you here on purpose and for a purpose today. And we are so glad just to be able to welcome you into the house. And I want to share some things with you today that I feel like God has dropped into my heart about the resurrection story. Because there are three words that were spoken that defined really the history of mankind. I'm 54 years old, so there are some monumental events that have happened in my lifetime that have been earmarked by words. And then there's some monumental events that have happened beyond my lifetime that have been earmarked by words. I do remember Ronald Reagan standing by the Brandenburg Gate on June the 12th, 1987, when he made the statement, Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall. Sparking democracy and freedom in Eastern Europe. Now, I don't remember December 7th, 1941. I may look that old, but I'm really not. But the day when our president, Franklin D. Roosevelt, said yesterday, December 7th, 1941, a date which will live in infamy. Statement made by John F. Kennedy when he said, ask not what your country can do for you, but rather ask what you can do for your country. There's a lot of statements that have been made throughout the history of mankind that have earmarked and defined what humanity was going through, but there's never been a statement that has had more impact than the statement made by the greatest leader that has ever walked the face of this earth, and that is the Lord Jesus Christ. Because you see, on that Friday as Jesus hung on the cross, He issued three words. The Bible said that he was given vinegar. And after being given vinegar, the Bible said he said three words. It is finished. It is finished. And then the Bible said that he hung his head and he died gave up the ghost. Now there's a lot that is packed into those three words that I could talk about today. But from the natural perspective, one would look at that. When he said it is finished, it seemed as though death had won out over life. That hell had won out over heaven. That Satan, Lucifer, the devil, whatever you want to call him, His agenda of death and destruction had seemed to win out over the agenda that God had for life. It seemed as though that sin had vanquished righteousness and that light had bowed its knee to darkness. That was the darkest moment in human history. The moment the Son of God the creator of life seemed to succumb to death and he said it is finished but that was Friday today's not Friday today is Sunday and Sunday is the day that changed the world
How many believe today can change your world? Somebody shout amen. Because you see, on Friday, the three words that changed that world was, it is finished. But on Sunday, there were three more words that were spoken. I'm going to read one verse today. It's Matthew chapter 28 and verse number 6. And the Bible said this, he is not here. He is risen. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Three words, he is risen. Shout those words out with me right now. He is risen. Hallelujah. Three words that took the meaning of it is finished and turned it upside down on its head. When the angel said that he is risen, that means in that statement that life had won out over death. That means that light had vanquished the darkness. That means that sin bowed its knee uh, and to the Savior of the world. Uh, that means that the grave had no hold uh, over the dead body of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, that means that heaven, uh, amen, had won the victory over hell. Uh, and I tell you that this morning because those uh, are the three words that are going to change your world today. He is risen. Jesus is alive. Somebody shout Amen. The reason I'm preaching this this morning is because Paul the Apostle wrote to the Corinthians. He said, this corruptible will put on incorruption, and this mortal will put on immortality. And then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your sting? O grave, where is your victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. It is finished. Yeah, that's what he said on Friday. But you see, the words, he is risen, are more powerful than the words, it is finished. Because you see, Friday really doesn't matter if Sunday doesn't happen. If Jesus had not rose from the dead, the death really had meant nothing at all. Because the Bible said this, that if Christ be not risen, then your faith is in vain and you are yet in your sin. Those three words, he is risen, are ready to change your world. Now, here's why. Because there are those under the sound of my voice this morning that you have heard the words, it is finished. You've heard the words as your spouse has come and said, it is finished, the marriage is over. You've heard the words of the doctor that have come and said, it is finished. There's nothing more that we can do. You've heard the words of your family that has come and they have said, it is finished. We want nothing to do with you. Some of you parents have maybe heard the words of your child as they walked out the door and said, it's finished. I'm done. I'm never coming back. Some of you have heard the words, it is finished from your boss as he said, your job is done. Don't worry about showing up on Monday. We have terminated your position. I could go on and on with different areas of your life where you feel like you've heard those words, it is finished. I don't need you to tell me. I don't need you to validate that because I believe that what I am preaching here today has come from the Spirit of God. There's people that are sitting under the sound of my voice that you would say, Pastor, if you looked at my situation, you too would say, it's finished. You too would say, there's absolutely no hope. You too would say, there's absolutely nothing that can be done. But I'm going to tell you here this morning, amen, my faith is rising so strong that I can tell you what man says is impossible. God said, oh no, what man says can't be done. I'm about to do something. Because you see, on that day, as death seemed to overwhelm the world, and the devil seemed to have won the battle, and sin seemed to have won the victory, amen, it's on that day when these women came to the tomb in a hopeless situation, thinking that their Savior had died and was never going to rise again, that God said, no, I'm going to prove to the world that there is nothing that the devil can do that I cannot undo. 
I said, there is nothing that the devil can do that I cannot undo. Amen. Will you give me about 20 minutes and let me speak into your heart this morning? Amen. Because I've got a word to let you know that just because you came into this service this morning thinking that it is finished, I believe God said, no, I'm about to make a resurrection in your life. And that which you thought had died and that which you thought was gone forever, the spirit of the Lord is in this place. And the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead has walked into this place and there's about to be a trembling in this realm that I believe is going to open up the tomb of your life and the door that you thought was shut forever and the stone that you thought had sealed the tomb is about to be rolled back by the Spirit of Almighty God and you are about to walk out of death and into life. You are about to walk out of destruction and into a life that is earmarked by the power and the Almighty glory of God because I believe this is Resurrection Sunday and it's a Sunday that's going to change your world. Somebody shout amen. Amen. How's that going to happen? How's that going to happen? Number one, Luke 24 verse one. These women, the Bible said, came to the tomb the first day of the week bringing spices which they had prepared. Number one, you got to stop living like it's Friday. Look at your neighbor say, today's not Friday. Friday's over. Friday's done. Oh, come on, somebody. I said, Friday's done. These women, they came with spices to anoint the dead body of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the reason they came with spices is because the Jews, they did not embalm those that had died. And so naturally, a dead body begins to stink. It begins to have an odor. In fact, when Lazarus was dead, Jesus went to the tomb and he said, roll back the stone. And Mary said, no, Lord, he's been dead four days. By now, he stinks. And so these women were coming to put spices to cover up the stench of death that had happened on Friday. But you see, they did not expect to find their Savior risen, even though he had said he was going to rise from the dead, yet they were bringing spices and they were acting as if he was still dead. They didn't expect the stone to be rolled away. They didn't expect to know that the Savior had risen. They just expected a dead body in the tomb. But you see, my friend, that's the problem with us. So many times when something dies in our life, we try to cover it up with spices so nobody else knows that it's dead. The marriage is dead, so we just cover it up and we just kind of act like we're roommates or uh, we're, we're so depressed and so we just kind of cover it up and we just kind of medicate it with more television and we, uh, you know, we, we binge watch our favorite show or we uh, go grab that bag of Doritos. There it is. That's my, that's, my, that's my indulgence, Doritos. You know that by now. We grab that bag of Doritos and we just watch and we, uh, or, or we, we lose our job and so we, we just kind of cover it up and, 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 and what we're doing is we're trying to cover up the stench of what has died and we're acting like it's Friday. We're talking like it's Friday. We're, we're, we're talking like there's no hope. We're talking like, you know what, nothing can ever happen. We're talking like, you know what, I'm never going to get healed. We're talking like I'm never going to get a better job and we're, all we do is we think about what we lost and we think about what we used to have or we think about who we used to to be. We think about, you know, what has been taken from us, uh, and that's all we talk about. That's all we ponder on. That's all we uh, uh, seem to live for. Uh, but I want to tell you something this morning, and if you miss everything that I say, don't miss this. Uh, amen. If you're ever going to get to Sunday, you got to stop acting like it's Friday. If you're ever going to get a... Oh, come on, somebody. I just hit it right there. If you're ever going to get to Sunday, you got to stop acting like it's Friday. And you got to stop looking up and seeing despair all around you and realize, my friend, that it's not Friday, it's Sunday. And when Sunday comes, what has died, amen, when the power of God touches that which has died, it has got to come to life. And you've got to start talking like, you know what? The doctor said my cancer is going to kill me, but my great physician said by his stripes, I I am healed. 
Somebody said, I'm never going to get, amen, a better job, but I know that my provider is not on this earth. My provider said that all of my needs are going to be met according to his riches in glory. Give me a pink slip if you want to. That's my ticket to a better job and a better opportunity and a better open door and a better environment and it's going to take my life exactly where God wants it to take. You know what, my friend? God is not surprised by what happened on Friday because God isn't looking at Friday. He's looking at Sunday and he's not surprised that something died in your life. He's not surprised that something went away. He said, no, you might look at death, but I'm looking at life. There's about to be a resurrection. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. But you got to stop acting like it's Friday. You got to stop acting like it's dead. And you got to start speaking life. Amen. Let me tell you something. The Bible said this, uh, death and life are in the power of the tongue. I said death and life are in the... <laughs> Can I talk to you for just a few minutes? I'll try to calm down. But I'm excited this morning. You know why I'm excited? I'm excited because I know that the devil is a liar. And I told you earlier, the devil has tried to take me out. And thank God for his grace and the grace of my wife and family. But I'm telling you this morning, I stand here to let you know that there is no death trap that the devil can put you in, that the Spirit of God can unlock that trap. And you can walk away free with a mind that is clear and a heart that is pure. Why? Because it's not Friday. Day, it's Sunday. Glory to God. Sunday, a resurrection already took place. They showed up early Sunday morning, but the resurrection had already taken place. They showed up with spices, but the dead body wasn't there. I really believe, my friend, in your situation, God has already raised to life that which has died. You've just got to start believing it and acting like it's alive because it is your faith that is going to roll the stone back from the tomb, and it's your faith that is going to cause you to step out of death and into life. How many believe it? Shout amen. There came a man. His son was demonically oppressed. And Jesus in Mark 9 asked the father, he said, how long is it ago since this came on him? And he said, it's been since he was a child. And oft times it would cast him into the fire and into the waters to destroy him. But if you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. And Jesus said, if you can believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. And straightway the father of the child cried out, and he said with tears, Lord, I believe, help thou mine unbelief. I believe today is the day somebody is going to start believing. I said, you are going to start believing, and you're going to stop looking, looking at the symptoms, and you're going to stop looking at the problem, and you're going to stop looking at the issue, and you're going to start looking at the Word of God that said this, all things are possible if you believe. Amen. Do you believe Jesus meant what he said when he said all things are possible? Come on, somebody shout amen. Can you say those two words, all things? Say it out loud with me. Come on, say it again. One more time. You've got to stop acting like it's Friday and know that today is Sunday and start living like it's Sunday. And when you start living like it's Sunday, you're going to experience the life that Sunday brings. Amen. Now, you say, Pastor, that's impossible. How do I do that? Well, number two, you got to stop thinking you got to do it by yourself. Because one would say, Pastor, you're telling me that if I just believe, you're telling me that if I just have faith, you're telling me that if I just stop thinking about all of the things that have come and all the ways that the devil has attacked me, you're telling me that if I just stop giving the devil credit by talking about him all the time, are you hearing me? Because the more we talk about what the devil has done, the more power we give to him. Oh, I'm going to stop right here. The devil only has power that you give him. 
Because you see, when Jesus died and rose again, he took the power of the devil and he took it to, and he took authority over everything that the devil can bring against you. Don't give him more power than what he's got. Because number two, these women came in verse number two and they found the stone rolled away. Now think about this. This stone is two to four thousand pounds. Two to four thousand pounds. They knew they didn't have the power to do it. There was no way these two women, it doesn't matter how strong they are, they cannot move this stone. But yet when they came, they found that they didn't have to do anything because God had already done it for them. You see, the problem is, we say, Lord, I believe, but yet then we try to get our hands on it and we try to fix it ourselves. And we try to manipulate and massage and work with it. And we try to do everything we can to make something happen. And my word to you is simply this. You cannot move the stone that is in front of the tomb of your life. It is going to take the supernatural power of Almighty God to come and roll back that which you cannot. And I'm telling you this morning, if you just get your hands off of it and say, Lord, I'm putting it in your hands, my life is in your hands. My job is in your hand. My family is in your hand. My health is in your hand. And you step back and you start to quote the word of God over yourself every single day. I believe you are going to see a supernatural moving of the power of the Holy Ghost in your life. And there's going to be something happen that's going to roll that stone away. And you're going to step back and say, hey, when did this happen? I'll tell you when it happened. It happened when you stopped trying to do it all by yourself. Amen. How did this stone get rolled away? The Bible said, Matthew 28 and verse 2, that there was a great earthquake, and the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door. I believe in the spiritual realm, just as it was in the physical, God is getting ready to shake things up. It was the earthquake that I believe earmarked the moment that the angel came by supernatural power and pushed that stone out of the way. Now, I'm going to just tell you something. How many believe God is shaking things up in America right now? Come on. Amen. Come on. Two years ago, yeah, when this pandemic happened, I believe God was shaking up America and he was causing the church to rise and say, you know what? Where is your faith going to be? Are you going to believe me or are you going to believe what the secular media tells you? And I believe God, come on somebody, God is shaking up the church and he is raising up men and women that are mighty warriors of the Holy Ghost that are going to say, listen, amen, the earthquake is coming and things may not look the way that they've always looked, but God is about to rearrange some things in your life. You know why? Because what you had is not good enough, and the season that you're about to walk into is one where God has healed and raised from the dead that which the enemy has tried to destroy, and you're going to become a brand new man and a brand new woman with a brand new marriage and a brand new home. You know why? Because today you've taken, oh my God, I feel the Holy Ghost right now. There's an earthquake getting ready to happen, but if you can make it through the shaking, God is about to rearrange things and you're going to walk into the best season of your life. Why? Because the stone is about to roll away and you're about to walk out of the tomb of divorce and the tomb of illness and the tomb of poverty and you're going to walk into the fullness of who you are as a man and a woman of God. Somebody shout amen. Oh, somebody receive that right now. I said somebody receive that right now. My Lord, there's a shaking going on. Mm. I said, there is a shaking going on. You may not like it when it gets shaken. You may not like it when things begin to move. But you see, my friend, 
Some things have got to move so God can put things in place the way that they are supposed to be. Because as long as we keep living the way that we've always lived, God cannot move in the way that he wants to move. And so sometimes there's got to be a rumbling under our feet so that we can know that God is at work. And when you think that everything is being shaken apart, that is just the Spirit of God doing what only he can do. Because you can't move the stone. You can't stop the illness. You can't take a menu your job and keep it on your own, but God is shaking things up simply because he is putting everything in place that you need for this next season. Somebody shout amen. It's not by might, Zechariah said. It is not by power, but it is by my spirit. I said, it is by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. You got to stop acting like it's Friday. You got to stop thinking thoughts of death, thinking thoughts of destruction. You ever watch Winnie the Pooh? The weirdest stuff comes to my mind when I'm preaching. It really does. How many watch Winnie the Pooh? You know what I'm about to say. Here comes Winnie the Pooh. Having a good old day, good old time. Here comes Tigger bouncing along. And I admit, I identify with Tigger so much. Probably too much. But here's Tigger with all the energy and, uh, you know, bouncing along. And, and, <laughs> and all of a sudden, here comes Eeyore. It's a beautiful day, but it's going to rain. We're going to have an awesome time, but we might get hurt. Oh, look at the house we have, but it might collapse. The devil's got you locked into an Eeyore mentality where you are expecting the worst. And by expecting the worst, you have opened up your heart for the enemy to bring more. Now, I'm not saying everything's going to go exactly the way you want it to, but I really believe it's time for us to stop talking and acting like it's Friday and realize that I serve a risen Savior, and I don't care what happens. Nobody is ever going to take the life of the Lord Jesus Christ away from me. I'm going to live and not die. Somebody shout amen. My God, they may say you're never going to walk again. A doctor may say you're going to be paralyzed. But I say that life is going to come into those limbs. And I believe you're going to walk up out of that hospital bed and you're going to walk again and do everything that you were created to do. I believe in miracles more now than we have ever believed because God is alive. And signs and wonders are proving that life has one out over death, somebody shout amen. Oh, God. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> Jesus. Man, so much I want to say. Amen. We've got, we've got a friend right now in the hospital. Doctor said he may never walk again. And my wife and I have gone in there, and we have seen his legs begin to move. We have seen his extremities begin to move. 
and we have spoken life over him. And we are believing for a miracle to take place. We, oh my God, come on somebody. I am, oh my Lord, I am tired of the devil keeping the body of Christ in a state of disbelief, saying that miracles and signs and wonders only happened to the apostles. If God did it for Peter, I said he can do it for you. If God took Paul and Silas and broke them out of a Philippian jail, God can break the prison bars of your mind and you can walk out and you can be free today. If God did it in the book, amen, he's going to do it in 2022. You know why? Because God has never changed. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He said by Malachi's mouth, I am the Lord and I change not. We serve a God of miracles. Somebody shout amen. amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> he can work a miracle for you. I said he can work a miracle for you. God. The prophet said, can these bones live? The Lord asked him, can these bones live? Ezekiel said this, Lord, you know. You know. You know what the Lord said to Ezekiel? He said, prophesy over these bones. <laughs> In other words, God didn't say, I'm going to bring him to life. He said, Ezekiel, you're going to bring him to life. When you begin to prophesy my word over these dead bones, when you begin to speak life over these dead bones, and the Bible said that suddenly sinew and muscle and flesh came on those bones. And as Ezekiel looked over that valley, amen, that was full of dead and full of bones and skeletons, suddenly those skeletons had what it took, amen, to rise up, and they became an army of life. Amen. What am I telling you? You got to stop getting out of the Eeyore mentality, and you got to start prophesying over your life. Every morning when you get up, you prophesy the word of God uh, over your life, your heart, your mind, your soul, your body. Uh, and as you begin to prophesy, the spirit of God uh, is going to bring life and breathe into your mind uh, and breathe into your body and breathe into your soul. Uh, my Lord, do you hear what I'm saying today, church? Uh, we live in the age uh, of miracles. Why? Because it's not Friday. It's Sunday. Somebody shout amen. <laughs> Glory to God. I know I got to quit. Your ham is burning. You should have put it on low this morning. I told you. If it burns, I think McDonald's is open for Easter. Go grab a Big Mac. It's okay. It's all right. Feed it to the dog. Dogs will eat anything. Burnt ham. Number three. So the angel, okay, so they're acting like it's Friday. He's dead. Let's cover it up. Come on, cover up the stench of death. Spices, here we go. But then number two, they didn't roll the stone back, so you got to stop trying to do it yourself. But then the angel said in verse 5, look, check this out. He said, why seek ye the living among the dead? Number three, you got to stop looking for life in the graveyard. Why would you go to a graveyard to find somebody that's alive? It's like, it's like the angel said, and, and I, I don't know. I don't think angels are sarcastic, but it's almost like, what are you doing? Why are you here? Don't you know he said he's going to rise from the dead? So why are you looking for somebody who's alive in the graveyard? And this is my own commentary, but it's like the angel said, hello. Come on. You're better than this. Can I just tell you right now? You're better, you're better than this. I'm going to switch on. When God cast out one-third of the demons out of heaven that went down with Lucifer, 50% of them went into sound systems. 
That's a fact. That is a fact. I know it. It's found in the book of Hezekiah, chapter 27. Tommy, he is going to have a meeting with me, I'm sure. He does not like what I'm saying right now. Stop looking for life. Let me, I, I, listen, why, why are you looking? Let me just tell you this, and, I, and I'm going I'm to close. I, I'm, I'm going to, I promise. <laughs> How many pastors have said that five times? No, I'm going to close here. here. Here's the deal. Here's the deal. You've got to stop living among spiritually dead people if you're really going to live. You do. You've got to stop listening to spiritually dead people if you're really going to live. And the problem is what you're doing is you're, you're, you're talking to the guys at work and you're talking to the people that aren't saved and you're talking to the people that don't know what they're talking about and they're, you know, they're giving you all this you know, doom and gloom. Let me tell you something. Hey Amen. What are you doing? Get out of the graveyard and start getting around some people that are talking about the Word of God and about life and about the Spirit of God and realize it's these people that have gone through some tough stuff in life and God has brought them. Listen, there's people under the sound of my voice that should be in jail today but today they're raising their hands and worshiping God because God took their sentence and cut it and commuted it and let them out of jail simply because what man says is everlasting. God said, no, I'm about to take the key and unlock the door and let you walk out of jail. Some of you should be dead today because the devil tried to take you out. Hang on. Some of you should be in the hospital today. Some of you, (laughs) some of you should not be living with a sound mind because your mind was blown out on drugs. But God took a mind that was blown out on drugs and healed that mind. And now you're teaching, preaching the gospel because God took a messed up mind and said, I'm giving you a sound mind. Some of you were living amongst the degradation of sin, but God said, I'm taking you out of degradation and I'm bringing you in. What am I telling you? You got to get out of the graveyard and stop listening and living and looking at the people that are spiritual really dead because you were not called to death. You were called to life. Somebody shout amen. And that life is going to come through Jesus alone. You're not going to find it in the friends who take you for all you're worth. You're not going to find it in the party scene downtown. You're You're not going to find it in your friend Jack Daniels. Besides, he's not your friend. Jesus said, I came that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. How long are you going to let the devil keep stealing from you? How long are you going to let the devil keep locking you up? How long are you going to keep trying to find life and all the stuff in this world that only brings death how long are you going to keep going back to the friends who've got you locked up into a mentality that you're never going to live come to Jesus today I said just come to Jesus today and for you that are saying pastor but it's finished no my friend it's not finished You know why? Because he is risen. That's why it's not finished. 